What's up guys, Tao here. Here's my personal rig I built a few years back. Um, I've been updating, changing a few things along the way. So today I'll be showing you guys what is inside my personal rig. It's currently running on Hackintosh and Windows at the same time, a dual boot. So now hopefully this video gives you guys a general idea of what I'm using and maybe if you do want to build a, a dual boot system Mac and Windows, maybe hopefully this video will help you guys out. So on the component side. All right, first thing first, let's start from the case. The case is Fractal Design Mesh 5C. What I really like about this case is it's ATX case, actually it's on the compact size. It doesn't take a whole lot of space and it's quite easy to work with. It comes with this uh, tinted side panel glass with four uh, screws on each corner. Now, what I really wish, um, maybe Fractal Design uh, for the future version, is make the panel uh, a little bit easier to take it off. Um, screws actually is quite convenient but I at times take the panel off quite often so I'm kind of a sick of unscrewing the screws and really wish they have a door or easier way to take it off or maybe just swing out I know they have a similar design but this for the size of it now this actually is really good I really wish there is an easier way for me to take the panel off but that was just me, maybe I'm asking too much. So let me put this panel down. And here you can see the inside of the case. Now this case actually is quite compact. And for the front, there's a, a lot of mesh at the front, um, hence the name Mesh 5C. Now there are massive filter in there, so the airflow is fantastic. There's also uh, airflow on the top so it's quite good in terms of the airflow the, P, uh, the PSU is hidden so give a very nice looking yeah so overall it's really really compact right so now I'm gonna just go through the the most obvious components the things we first see so first thing first is the CPU cooler now this is a giant cooler is Open phone, I believe. Open phone broken three, the third gen. So this is a fantastic cooler in my opinion. Now it reduced the temp of the, the CPU, especially when I'm gonna do uh, editing. So it used a lot of um, CPU power. So this actually, I don't really feel any warm on this at all. And plus the fan is super super quiet. I originally actually use this uh, this is the noctua l12 i believe so it's a low profile fan it's very very good but when i do a quite big project or big uh, video editing the fans are gonna go crazy spinning uh, because the cooling is not as good as this particular massive cooler in there right now so um, generally speaking, if you do have a smaller rig or maybe a ITX build, uh, this actually is really, really good. There are two fans around right now, so you can either take the big top fan off, just use the bottom one or vice versa. So I normally have two in there, so it's getting louder when I do a lot of uh, compute um, tasks. So other than that, otherwise, it's very, very good. Right now, it has a, a knock to a Chrome Max fan. Uh, all in black with the four colors grommets which is um, better than the brown one and also in the case fan in there the all chrome max the all black version of it and also get have different color of the grommets so they are very quiet the airflow is superb as well so i personally recommend it if you don't like the ugly brown color nocto fans under the cooler is the i9-9900K. So, so far, that processor served me, served me extremely well. So either that's the, the editing or the rendering or the gaming. So that is fantastic. I have no complaint about it. It's currently running at 4.9 gigahertz. Um, I'm kind of struggling to go up 5 gig stable. 
So, but I'm happy with 4.9 gig um, right now, gigahertz right now. So the graphics is the Sapphire RX 5600 XT. It play most of the major games, but I am thinking of the 5700 XT, um, but the price right now is quite high. When I'm buying the components, I need to think about uh, both the Windows and the Mac. So I am choosing my components quite carefully. So the 56 XT and the 57 XT, they both are superb uh, GPU for Hackintosh. So if you are going for uh, GPU, um, thinking about it, so I personally think 5700 XT if you have the budget, but otherwise 5600, the one I'm having right now is fantastic. And you know what, let me just switch off so I can take the components out, you guys can see. So let me just take the graphics off and you guys can see it better. Uh, now the power supply I'm using is the Corsair uh, 650, the RM650X. Um, so it's providing enough power for what I'm doing and there's no need for me to go any higher, at least not right now. Um, but in the future, if I ever change my rig or maybe change the rig for a different purpose, maybe I will change the power supply. But for now, it's fine. Uh, let me just take the graphics out. It's a little bit tricky because the big ass cooler here. So there we go. Now this is the Sapphire 5600XT, 5600XT. So I personal, my personal experience with the GPU, especially in the Hackintosh, I had very, very good experience with the Sapphire GPUs. So if you do want to build a Hackintosh and think about GPU, you might want to look into the Sapphire lineup and to me, they are quite stable. I never had an issue from those years I'm building Hackintosh. So yeah, so they are quite good. Now this is the Pose version, Sapphire Pose uh, 5600 XT. So here I also have a, a PCIe Gen 3 falling adapter. Right now it's running on my OS, uh, which is a PCIe. EM.2 on that. Uh, let me just take it off. You guys can have a close look. So the reason I am using this adapter is, uh, let me tell you, right now it's running on this. So it's on it's 256 gig uh, M.2 PCIe right now with this adapter. Now, a lot of, um, some of the user, some of the people saying is, if you do use the adapter, so the performance will be affected. Well, I actually did some tests, I actually did a video about this, I believe a while ago. So the performance, no, it will not affect the performance. The reason being is, this is, gen, this is the four speed adapter and then uh, this is the Gen 3 M.2 SSD. So the bandwidth, it will not affect the running on the same bandwidth. So they are absolutely fine. If you do experience a lower speed, either might be conflicts uh, between the PCIe slot on the motherboard. So I would suggest you just have read your manual, make sure there's no conflict. I actually did a video about the conflicts on the PCIe on the motherboard and please have a look at it. So you may learn something you didn't know about. So that's it. Yeah, the reason I'm using this is because this board uh, is the Gigabyte Z390 uh, Elite. It has two M.2 slots. The, the one next right underneath the, the CPU and the other one is uh, in the middle of the board. I'm um, quite often um, take the M.2 SSD in and out, in and out, swap it and just to testing things. So it's really cumbersome for me to have a SSD here uh, purely because the graphics are in the way. So that is not uh, user friendly for me. 
Right, next is the Wi-Fi card. Now, this card actually is from the original Mac and with a PCIe adapter. Now, if you guys do want to build a Hackintosh, I personally strongly suggest you use the original Apple Wi-Fi card so you will have a lot less hustle when you configure the system and also this card will be recognized automatically by the system which is you know hopefully if you want to build Hackintosh just use this adapter so it'll give you a lot less headache afterwards so this is my Wi-Fi card and right now is connect to this USB 3 header for some reason my USB 2 header on the board uh, is not functioning uh, none of them is functioning actually and uh, to my surprise I have no idea what's going on with them and I'm not bothered to figure it out since I have this so yeah so right now it's working perfectly fine I have no issue with it now let's talk about the RAM I have a 32 gigabyte DDR4 uh, RAM uh, by Corsair. This is a low profile uh, running at 32 uh, megahertz. I have no issue with this uh, RAM at all and been performed really really well. Uh, for me, for now, this for the tasks I'm doing, uh, 32 uh, megahertz is absolutely fine. There's no need for me to go any higher than that. And uh, maybe in the future, if I do want to build a even better performance machine, I may change uh, to a higher uh, speed RAM. But that's enough for me for now and at the back of the the rig there's there are other storage now those are the SATA storage so they are running on Windows and use the storage so another good thing about this back panel the screws are captive screw so you guarantee it won't lose them if you do you are gonna have to lose the entire panel and uh, so that is very good design from fractal so here at the back as you can see there are three mechanical what well, not two mechanical drive and one two and a half ssd so this ssd is running on the windows os right now so it's 128 that's enough for the os so one of them which one is it now this one it's the storage within the uh, Windows. Now, right now, mainly is hosting the games, just uh, store the games. And um, that's one of the reasons I use Windows and for games. The other one, now this is just a generic storage for everything. So under the Mac OS and under the Windows, so all the important stuff is gonna go in here. So, yeah. Now the cable management of the case, as you can see, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. So there is a gap here. It's very, very good for the cable management, um, especially if you don't have a lot of storage, you don't have a lot of uh, SATA cables, a lot of power cables like this. It's much, much easier to organize because right now I have so much going on in here. So it looks a bit messy, but generally speaking, it's really really good for you to do a cable management now another thing about this panel here so here's a screw 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 uh, you can unscrew this and the entire panel actually will come out like so so you can put the drives on the first and then and screw the panel on so it's quite easy now here you have access to the back of the motherboard. Now I've been changing the CPU, I've been changing the brackets for quite a few times. I can tell you right now with the open back, especially with this, it's very, very useful. It's very convenient, save you a lot of time effort to um, take everything apart and put it back in. So now all you do is take this apart and you have access to that. It's very, very good design. All right, guys, this is it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this video is somewhat useful to you guys, especially if you want to build a Hackintosh and a Windows dual boot system, at least helpful on the hardware level. So if you do have a different experience or if you do have a list of hardware you want to share with others, please leave the comment down below so 
the new user or the newcomers actually will benefit from your experience and your hard work list. So let's build a community. All right, guys. See you guys in the next video. Later.